today on KUJH News. Student Senate votes tonight on funding the Multicultural Center. And the Bird Union faces its final days. How KU will use the new space. KUJH News starts now. From the University of Kansas, you're watching KUJH News. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mary Kate Baker. Tonight, University Senate will vote to consider a proposal to fund the multicultural student government at KU. KUJH reporter Alex McClune is live in the newsroom. Alex? Thanks, Mary Kate. The new governing groups come comes from a list of demands created by the student activist group Rock Shock Invisible Hawk, which requested a governing body independent of the KU Student Senate. The multicultural student government will focus on representing marginalized and traditionally unrepresented students and their issues such as recruitment and student retention rates. The multicultural government proposal has started several conversations over its funding. What I hope will happen tonight is that we will have a respectful conversation. I think this semester, a lot of times senators have been put in an uncomfortable position to where they feel like they are unable to voice their real opinions in fear of retaliation or in fear that they're going to be labeled something that they are not. If approved, the funding will add $2 to university student fees, totaling in $90,000 in funding for the separate government. Student Senate meets tonight at 6.30 in Alderson Auditorium, live in the newsroom. I'm Alex McLoon. Back to you, Mary-Kate. Thanks, Alex. Tonight's Senate will also vote to elect a new vice president. The Lawrence City Commission approved an expedited construction plan for the intersection of Ashdale and 19th Street yesterday. KJH reporter Nick Price tells us why getting this approved quickly was essential for the timely completion of KU's Central District renovation plan. Camp is already written with construction. We'll see even more in the near future. Osdale and 19th will be closed for construction beginning this spring and is set to be completed before the end of this summer. The expansion of the intersection will improve traffic flow and establish a northbound roadway that will serve as the main entrance to KU's central district. However, the plan for the intersection has some flaws. Vehicles approaching 19th Street won't be allowed to go straight through the intersection as the lanes are widely offset, but commissioners think that some drivers may risk it and do it anyways. I just think that if you have an individual trying to go southbound, on Osdale, cross, I mean, the, the maneuver they're pulling off is, is so unbelievably right. uh, risky and dangerous. This concern was quickly addressed, however, as it was then proposed that additional signage would be added to the roadway to make the intersection as safe as possible. The commission voted to spend an extra $43,000 to begin construction early on this intersection so that 19th Street can be reopened before the fall semester begins. Again, I, I, I think it's a smart move. I, yeah. I think it's the time you do it is now, uh, and, and you, make, you may pay a little bit more to do it, but I think it's right. Construction has already begun on the intersection, and it's expected to be completed by early August. Reporting from the University of Kansas, Nick Price, KUJH News. The current plan is for the rest of 19th Street to be renovated in the summer of 2017. A unanimous vote from the City Commission has given Lawrence Transit the go-ahead on turning KU's Lot 90 into a transfer hub. Lot 90, located right in front of the Ambler Recreation Fitness Center, could be home to a multimodal hub, complete with a parking deck, bike rack, and public restrooms. If the city receives a grant, this could be the first ever hub of its kind in Lawrence, a hub that both the city and KU have been working together on finding the perfect spot for, like Lot 90.
have till end of April to apply for a federal grant that could pay up to 80% of the project. Nugent says they plan to find out late August or early September. After nearly 40 years, KU's Burr Union will be torn down and rebuilt to accommodate the ever-growing student population. KJH reporter Heather Dace attended the decommissioning ceremony yesterday and found out what students can expect to see in the new union. The original Burge Union is set to be renovated as part of KU's $350 million Central District Redevelopment Plan. We wanted students to have a student center on that side of campus for, you know, there's a huge athletic center over there and then there's also all the Daisy Hill students. So we wanted to make sure that they had a place to have meetings and also to study and things like that. A special decommissioning ceremony took place yesterday to mark the close of the Burge Union. KU Memorial Union's director, David Mucci, welcomed everyone to food, drinks, and even a celebratory cake. Current and former students, as well as employees, came out to say goodbye to the building and get a glimpse of the plans for the new. We are, of course, here to really, at the forefront, honor Frank Burge, who this beautiful and soon-to-be more beautiful building it was named after. Student body president Jesse Pringle and president of the Memorial Union Corporation board Lauren Arney removed the Burge Union dedication plaque, which will be featured in the new union. Many offices and services will not be returning to the union, such as the student housing department living office, as well as the Crimson Cafe. However, the new union is designed to house added services. Student Senate provided the resources and the space for a continuation of the legal services for students, the new sexual assault prevention and education center space, room for a reflection room, as well as the Emily Taylor Center for Women and Gender Equity. Although the replacement building is going to be less square footage, the layout is expected to be much more flexible for students. It'll be a lot more efficient use of space and hopefully that will increase the use of the union. The name has yet to be decided for the new building, but there is a chance it will also be named Burge Union. Reporting from Lawrence, Heather Dace, KUJH News. The building will close for good this Friday and demolition is set to begin later this spring. You can expect the new union to reopen in fall 2018. The Lawrence City Commission approved spending over $200,000 to remove and replace ash trees infected with emerald ash borers. KGH reporter Dan Garrett tells us where the funding will go. Lawrence currently has over 3,000 ash trees, and a majority of those trees are downtown. This money will be used to hire more staff to remove infected trees and replace them with different species of trees. The entire process should take about eight years. For KUJH, I'm Dan Garrett. Thanks, Dan. For the past five years, the university has imposed a common book program. The idea is to allow students from all over the country to read one book that they can discuss when they meet at the university. KGH reporter Hank Cavanero tells us how the program is actually working with KU students. The university announces this week that the next common book will be Between the World and Me. Howard Graham is one of the faculty members who helps choose the book. Ta-Nehisi Coates' Between the World and Me was chosen because I think it's a book that's appropriately challenging. Which would allow students to have conversations about more diverse topics, which is why the book choice is so important. What we really try to focus on is what is the right choice for the University of Kansas. Common book programs have been around for, for some time. It's not a new thing at some schools. So I turned to Google to see just how many of these programs were actually being used nationwide. And it turns out there's about 250 of them. But that causes the question, do these programs really work? Which seems to still be up for debate in the academic community. That made me think one more thing. Are KU students really using the program? I, it wasn't required. I didn't have a class that told me that I needed to read it. So I 
just didn't end up doing it. Joe is a lot like many students who have failed to read it because there is yeah, no incentives to. If they would have required it in a class, if I would need to do it for a class, I would have read it. But like, if it's not, I would rather just pick my own reading. I decided to go to Facebook and ask other students if they thought the program was useful. Majority says no. But Eliza, a sophomore at KU, has an alternative idea. Uh, I think it should be voluntary instead of mandatory. Um, like for my class, we went to see the author speak, and that was actually cool. The university understands the issues and is working to become better. We've learned that we need to really continuously and constantly support students over the summer when we ask them to go home. The new book will be passed out to all the students who enter KU this fall. Reporting in Lawrence, Hank Cabanero, KUJH News. The university will also place a reading guide in the back of the book to help students over the summer. Lawrence School Board announced a new superintendent for Lawrence Public Schools. The board selected Kyle Hayden as the next superintendent. Hayden is currently the assistant superintendent of business and operations for the Lawrence Schools District. The school board voted 6-0 on Hayden during last night's meeting. Hayden's contract will be finalized Wednesday. Coming up on KUJH. Students prepare for spring break trips, but will it feel like spring break for those of you staying in Lawrence? We'll have your weather forecast. It's been pretty unsettling. I can uh, tell you for sure that everybody in Montgomery County is uh, fearing for their life. Missouri police arrest a man suspected in four, possibly five murders in Kansas and Missouri. Stay with us. Missouri police arrested a man suspected of multiple murders early this morning. Pablo Serrano Vitorino was taken into custody after an extensive manhunt. Man he is suspected of killing four people in Kansas City, Kansas, and possibly a fifth in Florence, Missouri. Serrano Vitorino is an undocumented immigrant from Mexico with a record of deportation from the U.S. in 2004. The presidential candidate race continues as the pool of candidates grows smaller and smaller. On the Republican side, Donald Trump continues his string of victories with wins in Hawaii, Michigan, and Mississippi. Trump is projected to win in Florida, fellow candidate Marco Rubio's home state, and Ohio John Kasich's home state. Senator Ted Cruz walked away with a victory in Idaho. But I would say more presidential, and I've said this a couple of times, more presidential than anybody other than the great Abe Lincoln. He was very presidential, right? For the Democrats, Hillary Clinton is leading Bernie Sanders by over a hundred delegates. Clinton walked away with a victory in Mississippi while Sanders had a surprise victory in Michigan. But I just want to take this opportunity to thank the people of Michigan who kind of repudiated the polls that had us 20, 25 points down a few days ago, who repudiated the pundits who said that Bernie Sanders was not going anywhere. Clinton currently leads in Florida and Ohio. Temperatures have been warming up and it's starting to feel like spring. Let's take a look at your forecast as we approach spring break. Overnight tonight, temperatures will drop down into the 40s. We're here in Lawrence. You can expect an overnight low of 40 degrees, so not too bad. The warm weather, though, continues into tomorrow. As we look, we have temps within the 60s. However, the clouds are going to try and stick around throughout the day. Tomorrow's high will be near 62 degrees. And looking at the rest of the week, the mild weather will stick around. However, on Sunday, there is a 60% chance that we could see some rain in our area. If you're going to be in town at the start of spring break, temperatures will start approaching 70. So it looks like we're going to have some nice weather for the next several days as we approach the break. Well, that's good to know that Lawrence will have some, you know, good weather for some outdoor sports, hopefully. I know, yeah, we do have some outdoor sports. And actually, tennis is playing right now. And they have their first Big 12 matchup of the season, as well as we'll have more on Big 12 tournament that starts tonight. More on those matchups, what they look like, coming up next. The Big 12 tournament is finally here, and this is just another chance for Kansas to show that they are really the top dog. First games start tonight, and Oklahoma State and Kansas State play at 6, and then TCU plays Texas Tech at 8. The winner of the OSU K-State game will play Kansas tomorrow, and the winner of the TCU Texas Tech game will take on West Virginia as well tomorrow. Other matchups are Baylor and Texas, and then Iowa State and Oklahoma. And this will be a really fun tournament to watch. There's a lot of great teams playing in it. And the games can also be watched on ESPN2, and the championship can be watched on ESPN. 
After a rainout Tuesday, baseball will continue to play this Friday. Kansas will host the Millard Management Classic at Hogland Park. Purdue, North Dakota, and St. Louis University will all be in attendance. The Jayhawks' first game is against the Fighting Hawks on Friday at 3 o'clock. The game can be watched on ESPN3. Tennis team has had a great start so far with the start of the season, with their record being 6-2. and two. Kansas host Baylor in their first Big 12 matchup of the season. And the preseason poll, Kansas ranks fifth, which is just two spots behind Baylor. The matchup is at the Jayhawk Tennis Center and already started today earlier at 2.30. And softball swept the Southern Illinois tournament last weekend and hope to do the same again this weekend at their home tournament. The Jayhawk Invitational starts tomorrow and teams included are Missouri State, Western Illinois, Northern Iowa, and Nebraska at Omaha. The Jayhawks will be matched up with first with the Bears and the game time for that is tomorrow at 6.30. Well, good luck to those women on the softball team, and I'm glad to know that they're doing so great in their, you know, their sport. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of, you know, just woman power, yesterday was International Women's Day, and today is actually a woman's very important birthday. Happy birthday, Barbie. Today is National Barbie Day. The doll made its debut at the American International Toy Fair in New York on March 9th, 1959. Barbie actually has a full name. It's Barbara Millicent Roberts. The first doll sold for about $3. Barbies are sold worldwide in more than 150 countries. It's, I mean, I'm, you know, Barbie's kind of been uh, mm -hmm. in the light lately, but, but just about how they've kind of redefined their, you know, their motto. And I just think that it's so great that Barbie is kind of still going to be in little young girls' lives, but with a positive message about how we're all accepted for who we are. I know, I agree. Barbie's been in my life ever since I can remember. And I agree, and I can't wait that other people get to have the same. <laughs> yes. And that does it for us here at KUJH. Have a good night.